ABC News. Around the world and into your home. The stories that touch your life. With Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. This is 2020 Thursday. Tonight, an urgent warning for men who bike and the women who love them. Biking can ruin a man's sex life and make him impotent. They can't feel their penises. They can't, they can't ejaculate, can't have an orgasm. Arteries leading to the groin can be crushed by the pressure of sitting on a bike. My sexuality has just been robbed from me. I didn't know how to deal with it. The possibility doesn't come as a surprise to some men. Sometimes I'd find that just sitting in the saddle would cause my groin to go numb. Dr. Timothy Johnson with startling new research from one of the world's top experts on impotence, men, biking, and impotence. Every day, millions of men hop on a bike, not giving a thought to whether it's safe. But new research has found that the steady pressure of sitting on a bicycle seat can do serious damage to the male anatomy, and that that could have a devastating effect on a man's sex life. It's surprising, but the warning comes from one of the world's top experts on impotence, a urologist at a major teaching hospital. He is convinced that many men coping with impotence have a physical rather than a psychological impairment, and that bicycles are the cause. On top of that, Dr. Timothy Johnson found that the risk might be greater than men and their women want to think. I was pretty much on my bike on a daily basis, going to school, taking it to work, Riding a bicycle is just like an extension of my body. I can go fast, I can travel to places much easier than I can by car. I fell in love with it. Occasionally there was some numbness and some discomfort, but nothing that I ever really you know, worried about. If you're a man who spends a lot of time on a bike seat, that feeling of numbness in the crotch may be the first warning sign of impending impotence, the inability to have an erection. Looking back now, that might have been a warning yes, that you should have taken. Definitely. This 27-year-old man agreed to tell us his story if we did not identify him. We'll call him Bob. Well, I've been riding a bicycle since I was a little kid. Bob got a 10-speed bike when he was 16 years old. Young and healthy, he rode 25 to 50 miles a week. He never hurt himself on his bike, and he never experienced erection problems. But that changed when he was just 22 years old. Out of 17 attempts at sex, I was, I was successful twice. And those two times were very difficult, completely unsatisfying. Bob knew something was wrong. So you had three doctors and some testing, and the conclusion was it was psychological. It yes. was in your head. That's what they were telling me. But so now what do you do? I was going through extreme emotional anxiety. I mean, I was extremely depressed. I felt like I had died inside. I mean, my sexuality has just been robbed from me, just taken. I mean, I didn't know how to deal with it. But Bob was convinced his erection problems were not psychological. He began to read everything he could on impotence, even going to the medical library for the latest research. He came across two articles that suggested his problems could indeed be physical. My doctor looked at both articles and saw that Dr. Erwin Goldstein's name was on both, both of these research articles. And he mentioned, wow, Erwin Goldstein, he's world renowned. And right there I said, that's the guy I'm gonna go see. You have to sit in my chair to see these young people with impotence and you say somebody has to do something about this. Dr. Erwin Goldstein of Boston Medical Center is one of the world's leading urologists. A pioneer in the surgical treatment of impotence, he's also respected as one of the first to emphasize that impotence is often a physical problem, not just a psychological one. He treats over 100 impotent men each week and says that at least six of the 100 can trace the cause of their impotence to bicycles. In Bob's case, he discovered blockages like these in the arteries that feed blood to the penis. Blockages that line up exactly where a bike seat fits a man's crotch. When you sit on your bicycle seat, if you happen to be 150 pounds and you have to support your body weight somewhere, you are supporting 150 pound weight on the artery to your penis. Dr. Goldstein has determined that it takes just 11% of a man's weight to cause compression of the penile arteries as they press on the bike seat. He showed me how it can happen. All right, so here we have the pubic bone sitting on a typical bite seat. Show us where the arteries run on either side and how they can be compressed. So right they, in here. So they okay. literally come out, and if you press down like that, you're squeezing the artery. Clear as a bell. And it's both sides. So it's, either uh, side. 
So the injury is typically bilateral? That is, it occurs on both sides? That's correct. This is the bone you should be sitting on here. Yeah. You want to be sitting up there, but in fact, what happens is it presses here. You sit on this connector bone between right. here and here. Right. That's your pubic bone. That's the sit bone. Right. That's what you put your weight on. So when you put your weight on here, the artery gets squished. Okay. Put that artery in there one more time. Well, that red line there. Yeah. Or this china marker. And put it right there, and you can just... You can imagine. You can break this thing. Well, you, and you can imagine how it's being compressed. Penile arteries usually bounce back to their regular round shape after they're compressed. But Dr. Goldstein speculates that repeated compression over time, as in riding on a bike seat for too long, can flatten and injure the arteries, thereby leading to blockages that may cause impotency you get hardening of the artery disease from injury to the lining. You usually get it from high blood pressure and cigarette smoking. They injure the lining cells. But here's a direct crush injury to the lining cells. So it either happens as immediate impotence, or what's even more scary, it's sort of like a time bomb that's delayed impotence. But wait a minute. Everybody's ridden bicycles in their lifetime, but far from everybody has turned out to be impotent. What if I countered by saying 52% of men are impotent? At a later age, when it's explained by and other How do you respect. know that chronic compression or banging of that area was not a, in some way, shape, or form a risk factor? I mean, I don't know the answer. Dr. Goldstein estimates there are as many as 100,000 men who have become impotent from damage inflicted by bike seats or falling on top tubes. Stationary bikes can be just as tough on penile arteries, according to Dr. Goldstein. But spinning, a hot new exercise craze, may be better because riders spend time out of the seats up on the pedals. But what about truly serious bike riders? Should they be even more worried about their bike seats causing impotence? We talked to a New York City bike club. Is that a, something that you all heard about just sort of recently, or has it been around in bicycling circles for years? It's definitely a joke coming off of a five-hour, six-hour race, you know, that certain things wouldn't be in order. <laughs> Sometimes I'd find that just sitting in the saddle would cause my groin to go numb. Mm -hmm. I think everybody did that. And, and last year, I read an article about pros in Europe that had prostate problem and actual impotence problem because of how much time they spent in the saddle. And when you read that, what did you think? Um, I thought, wow, I hope that because I'm interested in the sport, I don't have to, like, give up, you know, my health, basically. However, the concern about impotence skyrocketed when the August issue of Bicycling Magazine featured a special report on impotency and cycling. Editor Lisa Goslin was convinced to run the article when one of her staffers admitted he had the problem. He's an amazing cyclist. He cycles 14,000 miles a year. He did the race across America. He felt that he did have a problem. He wrote a first-person piece about it. He visited Dr. Goldstein. Since then, he's adjusted his riding style, and as far as I know, he's back in the saddle and on all counts. <laughs> did you think about the possible impact on the bike industry? Most doctors we talked to said, listen, if there is a risk, it's very small. Bicycling is probably going to do more for you, beneficially for your health. It's going to help you. You know, increase your cardiovascular flow, it's going to get you in good shape, it's going to you know, decrease your, your risk of uh, obesity and other problems which can lead to arterial damage. For Bob, it was the very answer he needed. It became obvious to me and the doctor that bicycling could be the only cause. He said to me, you have a blockage in your arteries and I'm going to help you. And I wanted to cry at that moment but I didn't want to break down. I shook his hand and I walked out to my car, I sat in my car and I just cried. I just I just cried like I've never cried before in my life. I felt relieved. I felt at peace for the first time in so many years. And Dr. Goldstein thinks the stakes are just too high for men not to be told. I see men who have such nerve damage that they can't feel their penises. They can't, they can't ejaculate, can't have an orgasm. What's their crime in life? They bike ride. Dr. Goldstein is now testing bicycle seats to find out which design is kindest to the male body. And he will be available to answer your questions on the abcnews.com website immediately after 20.